what was the yeah we got up uh, it was about 10 o'clock in the morning and my parents were gone on uh, that day and my 17 year old sister Dale was uh, had her boyfriend over with a friend two two 17 year old men were there guys were with us you know and my sister was hanging out and we sat and we were like what are we going to do and then somebody came up with the idea hey let's go over to the mine the caves and uh you know investigate so uh sure enough we we got over there and hiked over there we brought my my older brother rob was uh he's five years older than me he was 10 years old and he had the presence of mind to bring some candles just the little ones so we brought the candles over and we, we found the cave that we wanted to go in. And did, do you remember which cave that was? Yeah, it was uh, the one over by the pepper tree where the blackberry bushes are. Yeah, yeah. I actually have some photos which I'll show you later. Okay. Maybe we can pinpoint yeah. which one. Yeah, now, now, was... now, do you remember having been in there before? Not so much, uh, not really, not when I was that little. You know, later on, of course, we we traipsed yeah, yeah. all through there. But yeah. okay, so go ahead. And pick yeah. Up the um, so we got to the entrance of the cave, and you know, we uh, we all climbed down in there, and we uh, went down into a, a kind of an open room. It was probably twenty or thirty yards after the entrance, mm -hmm. and it opened up into a large space, and there was catacombed trail you know caves going in different directions uh -huh. from this main room so we said well let's let's go a little farther you know it's that was 15 minutes into the trip so we decided we took off down into this one and evidently it, it kind of made us a, a u-turn and switched back onto another one and it was just a maze in there so, after maybe a half hour of being inside the cave, we decided, you know, let, we better get out of here, you know, it's, it, it's, it's too dirty and rocky and everything. So we tried to make our way back to the entrance. We just couldn't find it. It was kind of like that scene in Journey to the Center of the Earth when Pat Boone fell down into the catacomb and he make the wrong turn and he couldn't find the entrance and we were the same way so you know my brother had the candles lit and my sister's boyfriend had one of the candles and my brother had the other candle and you know we're looking around looking around and a good half hour later we can't find the entrance so we sat down and you know I was so young I really didn't realize exactly what was going on but so you didn't really realize the seriousness of the, exactly the situation we, yeah and you know but I knew they were saying hey you know we're lost how are we gonna get out of here and uh, we kind of sat down they sat down to collect their thoughts I guess so in the meantime while they're sitting there talking and times passing these little candles they're getting down to nothing. And uh, finally, my brother was holding the last one with just the tips of his fingers. And uh, it got, you know, the wax dripped down and burned his fingers, and he dropped it down in. And there was large rocks everywhere on the ground. They were good six, seven-inch diameter rocks. And once that thing fell in there, there was no tracing it anyway, even though it was, you couldn't use it anyway. So... You know, I remember they were trying to move rocks and it was pitch dark and they're trying to find the last remnant of the candle. And, uh, no, no, it was a total futile, you know, attempt anyway. So thank goodness, uh, my sister's boyfriend, uh, Jim Butters was his name. And he had, he was a smoker and he had a, uh, the, the old, Zippo flip top lighter and they had like a half a pack of cigarettes so him first they started out with the lighters and they're kind of like you know oh man 
they didn't know where to go. And uh, they realized, well, if we keep burning the lighters, they're going to run out of fluid anyway. Right, right. So they did that for like 10 minutes, and then they, they said, well, let's light cigarettes as a light. So they both lit up. And I mean, you could, you could see the cherry, you know, from me to you. Mm -hmm. But that was all the light we had. And then after a while, this, this is maybe an hour or two hours into the trip now. And uh, the cigarettes, they just kept chain smoking, trying to keep some kind of a light going. And uh, I mean, Ralph, it was, it was amazingly dark in there. But after a good hour, they, they smoked up all the cigarettes. And that was it. We were completely. And, and, did, and did, did did you try to continue to figure out a way back while you were? Smoking? While they had those cigarettes, that we were still trying to find the entrance. That yeah. was the whole. That was our existence, you know, at the time. That was our whole main goal was to find the entrance. So they were, you know, as they were smoking, they were trying to feel their ways along the side of the walls of the cave, you know, and you couldn't see out in front of you. I remember at one point they had the cigarettes going and we were, we were trying to like find our way and they came to a spot where the, the cave just dropped off. And uh, we had heard about these pools that where, you know, water had just taken the floor away from the uh, erosion or whatever and uh, one of the Jim he grabbed one of the rocks off the floor and he he was at the front of the pack we were all behind him because it was all single file you know that you can't really walk along the side of each other in those caves it's just right. enough for one man and he dropped a rock down off the ledge and it fell like 30 feet and it hit this pool of water and he was holding a cigarette out there and you could see the splash a little just like white little bit of white ripples down there and uh, we didn't want to go back you know everybody would have to turn around in the rocks and and because we were kind of like on our knees and we were getting torn up cut up and uh, there was a little bit of a ledge the walls of the cave were there, and there was about a two-foot ledge on the four feet that you had, maybe, of walking, a floor. There was like a two-foot ledge, and we scooted along that edge where that 30-foot drop was, and, and we, we got around that, and we kept going. So, time's passing, hours are going by, and we're just... Once the cigarettes went out, it was pitch black. I put my hand right here and I couldn't see my hand. It was so dark. There's zero, zero light. Nothing to adjust to. Um, so at the, as the time went on, you know, we, we didn't know how many hours had passed, but my sister knew somebody had to be out looking for us. Somebody must know where we are. They never left to know. They never told anybody where we were going. Um, so I guess about after crawling through the cave for hours and hours, they finally got it. We all got exhausted. At one point, it got so bad. My oldest sister, 17, I was five. She got into like a spider position where she put her feet and she put her hands behind her and she was actually crawling like this. Just and they have a different... A different, like instead of being bent over or whatever. And she, I was getting tired, of course. She put me on her stomach, cutting her hands up on the rocks. She put me on her stomach and I was riding like a horse on her. And uh, I'll never forget that because I was like kind of starting to fall asleep on you know on her and she was still going and everybody was still going and we were talking and we got to this room Ralph unbelievable 
it was probably the 11th hour and uh, I remember at five years old that the adults, the 17 year old, I considered them adults at the time, they, they started, I could tell they were getting scared and uh, I, I was getting cold, I was hungry. My sister, uh, oh, Jim took me and my 10-year-old brother and he told us to come over to him and, and, and huddle up for warmth. And he took his t-shirt and he pulled it over the top of both of us and we kind of just hunkered down on his shoulders and he kind of held us and um, they, I, you know, they thought we were, couldn't hear, or we weren't really paying attention or whatever, we were sleeping maybe they thought, and they started talking about how are we going to get out of here. We, we can't get out of here. We, 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 might, we might die here. That's, I remember hearing them say, this might be the last thing that we ever remember, is being lost in this cave. And that scared me. At five years old, I was like, this ain't happening. But of course, you know, you keep a positive attitude, you know. So we're all in this huge room. The big open, about the big, as big as this room. From what I remember, like, they had gone around the edges and, you know, tried to feel their way around. And they said, we're in a big room here. Let's stop and rest. And that's when they did the t-shirt thing and everything. And uh, everybody fell asleep. We, uh, you know, I remember falling asleep and it got quiet. Everybody fell asleep. That was after they started talking about, we're gonna, we might die down here. So we're sleeping, right? My sister Dale, she hears this, she heard something. You know, women, they got, you know, real sensitive hearing or whatever. She was probably wasn't even really sleeping, but trying to rest. And she goes, Jim, you know, I hear something. And he goes, I hear nothing. It's just your imagination. You're, uh, you know, you're just hoping for a good outcome or you're hoping for the best. You're reaching for straws, you know, or something. And, uh... So she kind of went along with it, with him, and we tried to go back to sleep, I guess. And about five minutes later, she goes, I hear something again. And that time, I heard it. And uh, she says to him, I hear something again. And I said, I heard it too. And he goes, and then all of a sudden, we see a light in the roof of this room where we're at there was a small a flashlight light came beaming through that this small it was a squirrel hole we were so close to the surface and somehow a squirrel had ripped his way through the the top of that hole and he probably fell down in there and died after he dug his hole or whatever but the light had shined through that hole in the roof because those caves they 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 do this you know they'll they'll go side to side but they also go up and down wherever the vein of quicksilver mercury wherever that vein is going they're following that vein and that squirrel hole you know, after we had heard the noise, they were the the police and there was like 300 cops. I heard that we had made a skirmish line and were just combing the hill. I guess they were either looking for bodies or whatever. You know, they probably feared the worst being that long gone. So they probably what we heard was them approaching. And that's the noise she heard, and then, and then as they got closer, I heard it. And then, you know, we were all holding our breath silent, and that we saw that flash of light on the ceiling of this room. And we just started screaming, you know, help! Thank God! You know, we're down here, get us out of here! 
And uh, all of you know, within five minutes or so, somebody had, with picks and axes or and whatever they had, I don't know how they did it, but they had busted through the roof of the, the room and they started pulling us out one by one. And I remember getting out of there and it was like, it was like late, late at night for us, for a five-year-old, it must have been 10 or 11 o'clock at night. And I remember coming out of that hole and I was dirty and tired and and I looked around and I just see policemen, sheriffs, you know, uh, volunteer people. And they were all lined up, like I, just like I said, they were in a big long line and there must have been two or three hundred of them. And that was a sight to see. It looked like a cavalry charge, man. So, um, of course, they wrapped us up in blankets or whatever and they took us back to the house and uh, gave us a meal and showered and put us to bed. You know, I was so young, they just whisked me in off to bed. But I guess my sister stayed up and talked and news reporters and the whole deal. And we found, I found out later on in the years that uh, our neighbor, Dennis Percy, had said, uh, had told my mom and dad when they got home that afternoon that they saw us going over the hill and uh, he said I bet they went in the caves and that's when they you know started calling the police and forming the skirmish and uh, started the search thank God for Dennis seeing us or we might have you know our bones might be sitting in that cave right now so that was a miracle and then later uh, about a week later, I went to my grandmother's house, and my uncle was an avid newspaper collector. And he said, uh, I got you guys' article here, five kids trapped in the mine, the Quicksilver Mines in Santa Clara County for 11 hours. And uh, he said, I talked to a friend of mine in, in Hollywood that collected papers, and he said, we hit the Hollywood newspapers down there. So that story went all the way down California. And, uh, yeah, that was just uh, thankful to be alive type now, of thing. Now, tell me, tell me again who all the five kids were. It was uh, my sister, Dale. Dale. She was 17. Uh -huh. Her boyfriend, Jim Butters. And then there was a friend of his that was with him, uh -huh. spending the day with so him. So Jim Butters' was, friend, and you don't remember his name. I don't name. remember his name. And then my brother Rob, he was 10 years old, and then me. Uh -huh. So there was five of us. And, uh, yeah, Ralph, you know, it's uh, another escape and death there. Another one of those times. You know, the hill offered many ways to... <laughs> To get hurt. To get in trouble, yeah. Yeah, you know, we used to play with the trains when we were kids. We'd jump on the trains and ride the freight trains well, and stuff. You know, I, I went over to your house one time, uh -huh. and we had a blast. We were jumping off the side of the hill onto a mattress, and when I ran, <laughs> when I got, when I went back home, uh -huh. I, I knew where I lived, but I wasn't sure, like, the route to take, mm -hmm. so I just cut straight across. Mm -hmm. And when I cut straight across, I ran past a shack that said dynamite on the it. The dynamite shack. I know where you were. I told you to go down the hill and up over the other side. I remember that now when you came to visit me. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a great memory. And when I went running past the dynamite shack, I heard somebody yelling at me. Hey, get away from there, you know, but I was just running past it. You know? Yeah, so you just, were leaving the I area. I just kept going. But I told my mom, you know, yeah. I didn't always tell her what I did, but in, right. the, but in this, this instance, I saw I went over to Wayne. Well, I was hoping to go back over, you know, uh, in the Another future. Time and visit, yeah. And then she forbid me. ex that. Yes, and I was like so bummed out because we had such a, a great time. But I used oh, yeah. to go back in there all the time anyway. Yeah. Uh, uh, playing around the, uh, you know, that uh, cardboard hill or it used to be a cemetery. We right, found right. tombstones and the turned over car. Right. That, that was back That's there. That's right. You know, there was very few of my friends that had the courage when you're kids to go that far up onto the hill 
was a big, you know, big adventure for a young kid. Well, I'd usually go with Mitch and John. So you were like, yeah, you, you, but you were the only one I think that actually made it up to my house. You and Oscar, and, you know. I would have been going up there all the time. Oh, I, I wished I you had. I wished yeah. you'd been able to. But yeah, yeah, I remember you and Mitch used to go, like you say, over here where they had the old golf course in the cemetery. Right, we'd be and up the there water tanks. all the all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Now I remember. Uh, I remember being in uh, fifth grade, uh -huh. and I was in a fifth, sixth class. Remember Mr. Bogue? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, 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 and I remember Mr. Bogue uh -huh. saying, saying something about, about you being trapped in a, in a, in a cave. Is that and right? he made some mention, and I turned around to look at you, and you were just like smiling, you know? And I thought, oh, that's incredible, you know? And I'm not hearing... I never asked you about it, and I'm not hearing the whole story until until today. Yeah.